Hey everybody, it's Rook Zero from Tandem Gamers. Uh, I wanted to go through and give everybody a little tutorial on Audacity today. I've had a few people asking me about it, and I thought I would just run down some of the tools, some of the tricks, and give you guys a, a quick lesson here. So, first thing I want to look at is our hardware settings. So we have, you can see here, I have my Blue Snowball microphone plugged in and recording. So, uh, just make sure you're using the right tools, because this will find, like, I have a sound mapper, I have a capture device, I have a webcam, and so I always make sure I'm using the right microphone. I do want to be recording in stereo right now. If you have uh, memory limitations, you can go ahead and go to a mono, but many of the editing, analysis, and effects only work in stereo recording, so go ahead and set that up. And same thing here, uh, I have so many different things I could use for my speakers, but I wanted my headphones to work right now, so we're going to go with that. So the next thing I want to look at is how Audacity records. When we hit record, I'm recording right now. I'm going to go about probably six seconds and then go ahead and stop it. So that gives me, and you can play it back. I'm recording right now. Yeah. So that's pretty straightforward. Hit record, it starts recording. But now what we find out is if you hit record again, I'm recording right now. I'm going to go about probably six seconds and then go ahead and stop it starts recording again on a net separate track. And this seems kind of counterintuitive because you'd think you'd just start recording at the end. But uh, audio tracks are designed so you can have overlay as well as uh, manipulations of individual recording sessions. So right now I could hit play. I'm recording right now. I'm going to go about probably six seconds. Of, you hear me snapping my fingers, which is great. Uh, and, but we don't need that right now. So if you want to start recording at the end, you can go ahead and just click inside your timeline and now we since we've set this point when we start recording it'll start recording from that point and we can continue on recording to possibly 11 seconds you can record longer than 11 seconds i'm just giving you guys a keyframe and it gives me something to say so you will notice that there's a little bit of a shift um i'm not sure why it does that a little bit of bleed over but we can easily repair that with the select tool again if we just highlight that section there's a couple options we have to get rid of this what we can do is we can either just cut it completely with the cut tool, but so that'll shift our timeline. Or we can come over here, and this is the first trick, is the silence audio button. Uh, the silence audio button just completely squashes everything to no decibels. So we can go in there and we can just say, no, we don't want that. We can move over here. No, we don't want that little bit of sound that was on the end. We also don't want this lead in here. So we're going to select that and squash it. Now, the next tip I have is that when you select things with the selection tool, uh, you are actually locked into the selection. If we hit record right now, it's only gonna record that little bit uh, because we have this selected. And this is a great tool for saying, you know, I really didn't like this section and I'm gonna go ahead and just delete it. Now, the next question is what is happening right here with this arrow? This is the quick play and you can click and drag and it will just play what's between those arrows. So right I'm here. going to go about seconds and then go ahead right the other option for the quick play in the timeline here is you can just click probably six seconds and then go ahead and stop it and it will play it'll continue to play probably six seconds and then go ahead and stop it it'll start recording from that point and we can continue on it'll continue to play from that point onward by default when you make a selection it automatically puts that quick play in just this frame so you can listen to just that section. I'm going to go about probably six seconds and then go right so, so this is really nice if you want to say, I don't like this. I want to completely squash that out. And now I want to re-record it. So I want to quick play this so I know what I'm, I'm leading up to. I'm recording right now. I'm going to go about, okay. And I'm going to hit record. Six seconds longer than I thought I would. And now we can go back and quick play this. I'm recording right now. I'm going to go about six seconds longer than I thought I would. So that moves us on to our next tool, which is our time shifter tool. And we say, you know what, I want this to be a little closer. I want to get rid of that overlap there, so that'll go right into it. And let's go ahead and squash out. I'm going to go back to my select tool. I'm going to squash this out. The other thing you can do with the select tool is you can just, with the cut, you can completely remove that section. Um, so once again, those are two different options. Yeah. Let's go, just cut those up. and it automatically snaps to the end of the point, so that's good. I'm recording right now. I'm going to go about six seconds longer than I thought I would. It'll start recording from that point, and we can continue. There you go. So, so now we've made a 
pretty comprehensive thing. If you're happy with that and you want to commit your changes, you can either select everything with Control A or you can use the select tool, which I'll show you that real quick. You can just select those. Go up to tracks and mix and render, and that will compress them all down into one audio wave. Uh, if you don't want to do that because you're using sound effects that you want to keep accessing or you're, you have a specific reason that you don't want to mix those all together, you can mix and render to a new take. And now we have that waveform as well as our original files. So we can go ahead and grab this and now it's repeated itself twice, which is kind of nice if we need that. Um, so if you, if you need something to repeat over and over again, whoops, you can make a quick section of it. And then we can cut this whole section out. We can come up here to this frame or any of the audio tracks really, put our selection down and then we can paste it. And now that's on this track as well. So that's two different ways that you can move audio waves to different files, different audio tracks. If you go through all this editing and you're happy with what you have and you don't want to compress it or anything, you can go up here and you can file instead of saving the project because saving the project will retain uh, your audio tracks and your locations. You can export the audio um, and it will compress all of those down because tracks will be mixed down to two stereo channels uh, in the exported file. And so that, that kind of does that mixing for you so you don't have to worry about it. Uh, and you can add your metadata uh, through here if you are doing a song or music or just uh, just want to keep track of your things. So I'm not going to because I'm lazy. Thanks again for watching, guys. My name is Rick Zero with Tandem Gamers. If you have any comments, questions, or things you'd like to hear about for Audacity, just let me know in the comments below. And as always, like and subscribe, and I'll catch you later.